Let's start in a moment. Okay, we'll start uh, discussion. The first topic is systolic array. Okay, you already started. Okay, we didn't do this. The recording is started. Okay, you started. So we'll start the discussion on Google's uh, TPU. Uh, for understanding TPU, we will first understand systolic array. Let's move. So systolic architectures replace a single processor with an array of regular processing elements. Here, the main point is regular. The word regular or disciplined is very important. That's what whole concept of systolic array is. Here, we orchestrate the data flow for achieving high throughput. And key idea is to reduce memory excesses. Because we are so regular, we can reduce the memory excesses. So in conventional processors, such as CPU and GPU, every core can access the memory. Hence, these processors are suitable for even irregular computations. However, in systolic array, we have an array, right? That's why it's called systolic array. We have an array. It could be one-dimensional array, two-dimensional array. And people have also proposed three-dimensional uh, three systolic queue. So here, only the P's at the boundary, they access the memory. So the first P reads it passes the data to, to the next P, this P does not directly access the memory, and so on. Finally, the last P gets the output and sends it or stores it in the memory. So here, uh, we have replaced, instead of one P or one processing element, we have multiple P's arranged in an array, and they access the memory. The data moves locally between adjacent ALUs, which is the register to register movement in a spatial pattern. Data is moving locally. So this P is also same as ELU. Okay, PLU, that this, uh, sorry, PE, P is doing any processing such as MAC operation or other ELU related operations. So here, between the register of one P to the register of other P, we move the data. For regular kernels such as matrix multiplication and convolution, systolic array is very efficient. However, it is not at all useful for many other kernels. That means for one fixed operation, it is very good. For other operations, you can't use systolic array. So because systolic array is most important for matrix multiplication, and most of the computations of AI can be cast into matrix multiplication operation. So that's why we'll discuss the matrix multiplication operation. And first, we'll discuss output stationary architecture. Then we'll discuss weight stationary architecture. So here, in, 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 in a convolution layer, we have inputs and we have weights, OK? So usually, weights come from the top, and inputs come from the left. And output, see, we multiply input with the weight, we get the output. That output stays here in the P. So output stays stationary. That's why it's called output stationary. Now here, we have a, a 2D grid. Here, we don't have systolic. 1D array, it is a 2D array, okay? It's a 2D systolic array of size 3 cross 3. The inputs, I will call both as input, although in convolution uh, terminology, we call this as input, this as weight. But I right now, I'll just call both as input and this is output. So inputs are arranged like this. This is called systolic setup. So when we come to TP, you will see the systolic setup. Now, this is time zero, where the inputs are arranged like this. These inputs are arranged like this. Each processor accumulates one element of the product. Now, here at time t equals to one, A00 enters systolic array, B00 enters the systolic array, they get multiplied. 
all other PEs are idle, they are not doing anything. So in this cycle only one operation has happened. In this cycle, A00 moves one more step, right? B00 moves one step down, and now A01 has entered the systolic area, and B10 has entered the systolic area. So it's very, very simple. Uh, but because matrix multiplication operation is so simple, it is really efficient for matrix multiplication. In the next cycle, one more, one more step. Every matrix is just moving one step. The data is just moving one step. So it's very efficient. Now, here, apart from this, all other keys are working. Here, this P has finished its computation. Other keys have not finished. They are still working. And finally, in t equals to 7, we have finished all the computations. So if here uh, it was 3 cross 3 uh, matrix and we took 7 cycles. So it's just a linear time. If you see the equation, it is 3 and minus 2. Here n equals to 3, so 3 into 3 minus 2 is 7. So the number of cycles taken, because, because here we have our, our data is n cross n, right? Our input matrices are n into n, but because of our high hardware is also n cross n, the time becomes linear. If, if we had 2D matrices, but our hardware was just a linear, we would, we would need n square or order of n square time for doing matrix multiplication. But here, because our hardware is also 2D, so our time becomes linear. There I had explained. So here you can see this, this is the output of stas stationary. After everything gets done, you just you know flush. That means you move it down, that the output comes down, you store it somewhere else. So this is output stationary. Here it is weight stationary. Here weights are already stored. Okay, and output will keep on moving. So here input is here, weight is already stationary. Out as the output gets computed, it will keep on moving outside the it will keep on moving outside the systolic area. So here we have A0, W0. In the, in the first cycle, A0 gets multiplied with W0 in cycle one, then A0 moves here, then A0 moves here. Finally, A0 has completed its computation. Now A3 will move all the way down. A6 will move all the way to the right. I mean, no, no, A3 will not move down, A3 will move to the right. Similarly, all this A will move uh, uh, to the right. And number of cycle taken here is same as the previous case. But the, the architecture is different. It's called output stationary format or output stationary architecture. So here, green means idle MAC units. And orange means active magnets. What are the benefits of systolic array? Here, the communications with the outside world occurs only at the boundary sites. So, other other connections are very efficient. These connections are very efficient. I/O occurs only at the edge. Here, we read it. Here, we write it. So, these wires become short, very fast wires. There is no read/write, which saves time and energy. However, because it is so simple, it is very main, it is inflexible, you can't do other operations on this. It is limited to a couple of operations. It takes the same time to load a fully occupied tile as a partially occupied tile. So that means even if some of those values were to be zero, here if some of those values were to be zero, you don't save time. You don't can't do any optimization there. So if the matrix dimension is not a multiple of systolic area dimension, then hardware utilization remains poor. And if, for example, your hardware is 3 cross 3, but your matrix is that you're multiplying is 2 cross 2, then some of the hardware remains unutilized. Also, multiplication of sparse matrices takes the same time as that of dense matrices. Thank you.